men's 400 semi-final. Absolutely can't wait for this. So Havard, Bendal, Ingevaldsen. I wondered whether he was inspired by the likes of Carsten Varholm. And even if he isn't, he's in a great place to learn from an excellent 400 flat runner and a sensational 400 hurdler, the world record holder. Drinko, part of a, a decent contingent of Romanian 400 runners, both genders I include in that. So he goes on the outside, and then uh, Ben Dalyungvaldsen, 44.86, Norwegian national record for the young man in Oslo, his home diamond league. Lorenzo Bernati, big, big noise from the Italians once again. World under 20, 4x4 four four winner here in Finland five years ago. El Khatib of Portugal alongside 46.12 seconds this year. Ricardo Meli, 45.74, was someone who uh, won a silver medal in the relay two years ago at this competition. Stigerwald of Hungary. He's already seen his teammate Molnar qualify by winning his semi-final. Pfeiffers of the Netherlands and Bernard Ayata. So, unsurprisingly, really, a number of these athletes have had senior level really experience in particular. And Erta, silver medalist at the European Indoors in 2019 and indeed the World Indoors last year in Belgrade over the 4x4 with the uh, Spanish quartet because they've got some great athletes like Oscar Husseos and Lucas Bua. So watch out for Havard Bendal Ingevaldsen because he often finishes very, very strongly. And he goes from lane 7. Erta, Pfeiffer, Stigewald, Meli, Elkati, Benati, Ingevaldsen, Andringo, and he goes for Romania right on the outside in lane number eight. The second semi-final of the men's 400. So, big roars, those two Italians. I'm sure the decibel level will go up down the home straight once more. One of the two of them, it looks like a Riccardo Melli going slightly better at this point. Big gap though. Just exacerbated by the fact that Ben Dalingevoltsen has uh, gone out a bit more Carsten Varholm style than his usual late finish. And why not? I suppose when you've got his quality, you can afford to just change things up a little. And this is going to be an extraordinary gap. I wonder if he's going to ease off. El Khatib fighting, Benati as well. Dringo of Romania trying to get through. And Ben Dalingevoltsen celebrating as he comes through almost to a dead stop. Dringo did finish very nicely with Benati. We'll work that one all out in a moment. I was just looking as well at those uh, times for those behind the top three because 46.30 and 46.34 are those on the bubble. Kasulis, Lithuania and Sito of Italy. It may well be that one Italian knocks another out as we look you can see the main part of that stand has a nice side crowd in it. So Inge Voldsen coming off the bend, looking around. He knows he's got a four or five metre advantage over the rest of the field. And with ten metres to spare, just eases up. There's so much more there, that's for sure. In the first heat, we saw Molnar under pressure from both Spitz and, to a certain extent, Rafferty. Nobody was putting Inge Voldsen under pressure. And, uh, well, if we thought it was going to be a head-to-head -head between Molnar and Inge Valdsen, I think Inge Valdsen has made a statement there that he's going to be the man to watch and potentially could challenge Ricky Petrucciani's championship record if the conditions are right tomorrow. Would have liked to have seen another semi-final championship record, but I can't complain too much <laughs> given that he has had to run uh, two rounds in the same day and I think in the same afternoon potentially as well. Might have been 12 o'clock by the time he ran earlier. Well, we've been talking to people in the middle of the day and they acknowledge that this is a tough timetable for 400 metre runners. Yeah, absolutely. Inge Valsen, though, getting through, getting through what he needs to do. And he's into that final. 
and these are the athletes who will join him. So Kasulis holds on to one of those non-automatic spots. You can see there Benati, El Khatib, Dringo all going through along with uh, Ben 